One Piece as we know it would have changed just drastically if Ace just agreed with Marine when they asked them to be a warlord of the sea. During the earliest stages of Ace establishing himself as a successful pirate, Marine actually offered him to stay a pirate but as a warlord. But Ace disagreed and I'm not even sure if disagreeing with Marine was even that logical at that point. You might want to say that the warlord position was a sham, a trap, they just wanted Ace to come in and then they kill him. But this is not really the reality of how government work. Governments want to make as much as friend as he can. Let's not forget, the marine hunter himself is a warlord. The fact that Ace is the son of Roger is not enough for the government and marine to break the honor system of warlords. Because this easily could cause other warlords of the sea abandon their position. And let's not forget that Garp is still a high-ranked marine at this time. If we presume that government knew the identity of Ace, they very well knew about the relationship of Garp with Ace. So trapping him under the watch of Garp wasn't even an option. And let's not forget, world government didn't want to kill Ace because he was the son of Roger. Without the full help of Whitebeard and his crew, Ace had zero chance of being the Pirate King on his own. Especially as a warlord. You might want to say if Ace would have been a warlord of the sea, his dream of being the Pirate King would have been shattered. But that's not the reality because Moria, yet another warlord of the sea, still wanted to be the Pirate King. In fact, warlords took advantage of the government and not the vice versa. Again, I fully understand why Ace, the son of the freest person on the ocean, didn't want to be the warlord. But assuming he would have been, his dream of being Pirate King would have been shattered. And also, who said that Ace wanted to be a Pirate King? As far as I know, adult Ace during the manga never ever declared his dream to be becoming the Pirate King. Secondary sources like anime and Ace novel declared this, but we know for a fact the only non-canon thing about Ace novel is Ace personality and ambition. But in the actual manga, adult Ace, as far as I checked, never ever said that I want to be the Pirate King. If I'm missing any information, please comment down below. Also, do not forget to subscribe, but above that, tomorrow we're gonna have the fourth chapter of my fanfiction, a fairly well-written story about how Shanks and Ben Beckman met tomorrow on Rock's Review Long. But now back to the subject of Ace as a warlord. If we assume Ace would have agreed to be a warlord, what would be his life? I would very much like to assume that he was the opposite of Mihawk. Mihawk was suffering from success so he just became a warlord so his life could have been much easier. Mihawk life as a warlord was much easier since he was no longer the marine hunter and nobody from pirates and marine would bother him. But I like to assume Ace would use this position as the opposite of Mihawk. He would use his position as warlord of the sea to fight against other strong pirates and kill them in the name of his own honor and world government, technically. The main dream of Ace in the actual manga was to establish himself as a very mighty pirate and so he can understand love from a community around him. Now, he couldn't achieve the community part, but as a warlord, he could have fight one big shot pirate one after the another except from other warlords and more than likely Yonko of the Sea. So of course, without Ace being a member of Whitebeard Pirates, War of Marineford would never ever take place. So Ace had two more years to fight against many enemies and as we know, fighting is much more important for growing in power than just merely training an island. So I like to assume the current version of Ace two years after the Marineford War, still alive, is at least stronger than Sabo. Also, let's talk about Whitebeard and how his life would have changed if Ace never joined him. Whitebeard already was at the edge of a retirement when Ace joined him. 
He was simply too sick to be bothered to be a great pirate anymore. So the idea is, without the Marine for war, he, just like Roger, would disband the crew and would live life as a retired legend, just like Rayleigh. And Marco could have lead the Whitebeard pirates in the absence of Whitebeard himself. In this timeline, Tichy still had the opportunity of beating yet another famous pirate and become a warlord of the sea, go to Impel Down and free all of those famous pirates. And knowing that he desperately needed Gura Gura no Mi, the idea of him later on attack Whitebeard, kill him and steal his devil fruit is very likely. If this timeline existed, I assume at this point of time, Teach and Marco were fighting so one of them can establish himself as a Yonko. So I like to assume, I mean, I don't like it. I mean, I would assume that Whitebeard still would be murdered by the hands of Teach because he's a scum. But Teach journey into the way of Pirate King would have been much more delayed if there was no ace and if Whitebeard didn't die in the Battle of Marineford. So now jump two years, Ace is alive and part of Warlord system, Whitebeard probably is murdered as a retired legend, and Teach is probably on the edge of establishing himself as a new Yonko of the Sea. But few months later, Reverie happens and the sins of Crocodile and of Flamingo are still the same in this timeline. So the idea of Warlord system just going to the toilet is also very likely. So right now we have a much stronger ace, still alive, still the captain of his own crew, but no longer a warlord of the sea. So two directions exist for this version of ace. One, he can go and fight one of the Yonko and establish himself as emperor of the sea, a road that I believe is not that likely for this version of ace. The second major one is that he can join Cross Guild. You might want to say that he could join Shanks, but Shanks simply didn't care to invite him in. A novel of Ace clearly established that Shanks was aware about the identity of Ace as the son of Roger. Honestly, asking Ace to be an underling as an ally is kind of an insult to the legacy of Roger. And I really don't like to believe that Ace, a person who was always for the childhood superior to Luffy, go and work as an ally to Luffy as well. Cross Guild is the best type of group for a person who wants to join any group. And again, I believe Crocodile is crafty enough to invite Ace and make him an important member of this newfound Emperor group. Ace accepting to be a Warlord of the Sea means that he was still alive. Means that the War of Marineford would never ever take place. Means that the fate of Whitebeard and Teach would have been almost the same, more than likely, but far more twisted and dark. But there is one major scenario that would definitely take place if Ace was part of a warlord system and still alive, and that is helping Luffy taking down Kaido. Ace already went to Wano and made a promise that one day I will return to take down Kaido. And if he wouldn't go there early on when he's not ready and wouldn't be murdered by Kaido, idea is narratively he could have joined hand with Luffy in taking down Kaido. And honestly, Awano with Ace, this would have been a version of the story that I very much like to see in my dreams because it's never gonna happen in any canon or non-canon shape. Again, idea is that after this war, Ace would have been a three billion berry bounty who helped taking down two Emperor of the Sea just like Law and Kid. But again, since Ace never said that I want to be the Pirate King and he deeply hated his father, idea is, unlike Law, Kid and Luffy, he wouldn't leave Wano to be yet another Pirate King. He would go on his own direction and again later on would join Cross Guild, in my opinion, or work as an independent pirate just like Kid and Law before being taken down by one of the Yonko. Also, in this timeline, Teach wouldn't probably found the time to take down Law. It's really ridiculous how one decision can change so many lives. And this is a type of One Piece that it's fun to imagine at very least. This is my narration making fanfiction thingy from Rock's Review. And if you enjoy this type of video, who do you want me to do next? Comments down below. Do not forget to subscribe and I see you all beautiful people.
at Laugh Tale.